it, this is half the fun. We're live now. So we can see the ladies up here in the top where it's counting up. Welcome. Right. Welcome to our um, author meet and greet for group one. We're so excited to have everybody here. We've been getting a lot of comments on, oh my, oh boy. I forgot to say this also. It's about 10 seconds behind. So if you're commenting, which yay, I see a lot of people over here on YouTube commenting, hello, hello, from Nashville, Wisconsin. We have people from Minnesota. I'm not even gonna attempt to say that city. Carrie, how do we say that? Matamidi. Okay, thank you. I would not have gotten that. That was awesome. Carrie, Carrie you live in Minnesota. I almost mm -hmm. freaked out and said Wisconsin. Um, Maryland, Australia, wow, Australia, you guys, Kansas. If you're here in any of the Facebook groups across our authors on, on YouTube with us, say hello. Uh, we want to welcome you um, to our author meet and greet for our Meet Your Clean Romance Crush bundle, which we're super excited that you picked up. If you didn't pick it up, don't worry. By the end of this, you can have nine new books to read that are all fabulously awesome, clean romances, and you'll know the authors behind those books. So go ahead and comment because... Um, I'm going to let you know that we're giving away three gift cards tonight, and I'll kind of mention this um, a little bit throughout as well, and again at the end, $20 gift cards to either Amazon, Kobo Nook, or uh, iTunes, your choice, and you can't enter to win unless you comment, so comments are how you enter to win. So I see a bunch coming in over here from, still from YouTube, lots from Facebook groups, um, and it might be that you just come up as like a Facebook user. It's okay. I'll hunt you down and find out your name. Um, if you didn't give Facebook permission to show your name, like Lori did. See, she's from Facebook, but she gave Facebook permission. So I, it's easier for me to tell that Hi, that's who that is and where she kind of comes from. So awesome to see so many people uh, with Wyoming and Texas. Oh, I love Texas. It's my soul state. But we're going to be doing three gift card giveaways at the end from people who comment in any of the groups um, or pages that we're broadcasting to tonight. And what else did I forget, you guys? We're about 10 seconds behind what we see live on our end, authors. It takes about 10 seconds to get to your Facebook group page. So people who are commenting, we might see those coming in a little bit late. We might put them up and address them at that point, but it is about a 10 second delay. So sometimes we see a little bit of a delay there. Um, what else? I think that's it. Okay. I'm going to turn the time over to Bridget because she is the MC extraordinaire. And I just handle the technical stuff. And then Bridget is the public face of amazingness. So <laughs> I, I don't know about extraordinaire, but I will tell you that Tammy, who's right next to, well, I'm pointing the wrong way. It's inverted. Tammy, who's right next to me on here, um, has been on a cruise with me. And she specifically told me that as her extroverted friend, I was her shield <laughs> on the writer cruise. Make sure no one scary makes her talk. <laughs> so, um, so I am, there are. Um, extroverts among and that, that's my husband. I, I know, know how that's why I put it up. <laughs> he's actually with the girls right now. We're in Fort Worth uh, for a horse show. Um, and I ditched him at the barn with the three girls who are like doing their warm up ride for tomorrow's show. But anyway, um, so he must be on his phone, but he is supportive, which I appreciate. So we're going to go around because this is not something we do as often, I think. And we're going to have each of the authors here talk a little bit about who they are. And yes, they're going to share what their pen names are and they're going to share what they write. Um, and if it's different than the free book, then they can tell you a little bit, you know, like I know that Elena has several pen names. So um, she always wanted multiple personalities and this is her chance to have that. I know. Um, but she'll tell you a little bit about her pen names and how many books she has and everyone will go, what? Forget Brandon Sanderson, Elena can write. Um, but anyway, so we'll talk about that a little bit. Then we're also going to talk about some of the things that you don't necessarily see all the time. Some of the things about us. And look, I'd love it in the comments if someone says, hey, I have three dogs because I have three dogs. You say, hey, I have three dogs too or whatever. Um, I have a Pomeranian. I have two Pomeranians actually and a Border Collie. Feel free to chime in. We'd love to hear from you guys on that kind of stuff. And a lot of us will get in our groups and comment on our group um, posts later um, and interact some later. So I'm going to let Elena start and we'll just kind of go in order. We'll do Elena and Kay and Mandy um, and we'll talk a little bit about ourselves and a little bit about the genres that we write and pen names and that that stuff. Elena, why don't you go ahead and start? Back to yeah, you. Sure. 
So I'm Elena Johnson. That's how you say my name. I always introduce myself. And when I go to conferences and stuff, people are like, I know. I'm like, I know, but you said my name wrong 10 seconds ago. So it's Elena. If you just imagine there's an I in there, you'll get it right. <clears throat> or if you're from the Seinfeld era, you can think of like Elaine and it's just with an A uh at the end, Elena. So I write clean and wholesome romance. That's how I categorize it. I know there's quite a few terms out in the um, book world right now, but I write clean and wholesome romance uh, set on the beach under Elena Johnson or beach adjacent because I love the beach. The beach is my like spirit animal of beaches were animals. Um, I love the beach and I live by a great salt lake in Utah. So it's not a great beach. Nobody goes there for beachy fun. And so I try to write some fun beachy stuff. I write also under Liz Isaacson and Liz Isaacson writes Christian uh, cowboy romance and family saga. And she has, I don't know, 110 books or something like that. Elena has about 55 or 60. And then I write uh, sweet romantic women's fiction under Jesse Newton and she has about 15 books. So I'm, I'm sitting at about 180, 185-ish titles under all my names, all of them don't have any swearing or any sex in them. Um, they're a good, clean read, mostly series um, across my brand. I think I have 15 or 16 series and my brand is feel good fiction. So I write feel good books. Except Sometimes for the books. one she gave away. It's not part of a series. That's why I said mostly. That's why I said mostly. <laughs> That's what I write when I'm not writing. Um, I, I was telling these guys and I'm going to try really hard not to say that other word, but I am the dog mom to two neurotic canines. Like they have had a day, you guys, a day. Um, my golden doodle, I had to take him to the vet today to find out if he had arthritis and you know, he, that just got him keyed up and he doesn't, but he has to be on cage rest. He's a 60 pound golden retriever who I can't take to the park and throw a ball to. So that's going to be fun for the next two weeks. And then I have a little tiny dog who is a Bichon Frise poodle mix. She's a Pouchon. And she just, I mean, I think she went outside in the night last night, like six times. She's six years old. Okay. So that was super fun too. And um, yeah, so I've got them. My husband is at home with me. We work together and uh, inside the book writing business. And I just got delivered. This is another fun fact. I just got delivered 40 boxes of Girl Scout cookies. <laughs> Not all Thin Mints, though. Thin Mints are numero uno. And that is me. So we'll pass it on. All right, Kay, you're up. Well, I only have one personality. Um, and I write under Kay Carell. We live in the Midwest, except in the winter. We live in Florida because I hate winter. And it finally has turned warm down here and it's lovely. So um, most winters, my husband and I hide out in Florida while everybody else deals with snow and cold and sleet and all that icky stuff. Wait, when will you head back? I think we were talking on the phone when you went out to Florida. So how long are yeah. you staying? Uh, we're going to be here a couple more weeks. I think we're going to try to make it back by Easter. Oh, okay. So um, I write women's fiction with a lot of romance thrown in. And mine are also beach books. Obviously, I love the beach. And um, I have about 45 books out, five-ish series. I don't know. I'd have to count them up. Um, when I'm not writing, which is 99% of the time, for fun, if we're in Florida, we go boating or swimming or beach walking. Um, I'm a knitter. I love photography. A lot of times I'll use uh, pictures I took on the covers of my books. And since we're talking about pets, I have two adorable puppies. Only they're not puppies. They're old, but whatever. Um an Aussie that is very naughty and a um, cavalier who's adorable. My there. brother has a cavalier. I love those. They're so cute. They are. They are. I want one so bad. Um, okay. I am Mandy Blake. I write Christian romance and Christian cowboy romance. I only have one pen name. That's all. And um, I grew up and still live in rural Alabama. 
I grew up on a cattle farm, hence the cowboys. We don't have cowboys here. <laughs> they don't use horses to herd the cattle, but, you know, sort of the same thing. So I get to ask my dad questions quite often about how things are done, and that's always fun. Um, I have 25 books out now. Either they are cowboys, they are uh, small towns, or Christmas romance. And so I have quite a few to choose from, but the cowboys really have my heart and also the small towns since that's where I'm from. Are they all under the same name, Mandy? Yes, just Mandy. Yep. And I love to travel. Uh, my family and I just got back from Colorado. And in a week and a half, we're going on a cruise in the Caribbean. So, and then next up will be Scotland and then London for Thanksgiving. And we're always on the go. So <laughs> I love it. Um, Are you I accepting applications for new family members or no? <laughs> yes. I'd be the more the join. merrier. Come on. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> also in between our family trips, when my, when my people are a little exhausted, I, I love to go to like author conferences and writing retreats. So that's my, I still get to do what I love, but they kind of get a break when they're tired of it. <laughs> um, I live in Alabama with my husband and my daughter. She's seven. Um, she had some teeth pulled today as a dentist. So that's been an all day adventure of, she woke up very emotional. So I was like, mommy's here. Mommy loves you. And then she was like, it's you. And so I was like, yes, it's me. And we just keep saying this over and over and over again for an hour and a half. So I'm like, oh, wow. yes, it's mommy. Look, it's mommy. <laughs> so <laughs> that's kind of thrown my day off a little bit, but um, she's great now. So oh, I'm glad she here came I out. am <laughs> switching, you know, switching and things up a little bit. All right, Jenny, I think we're up to you. So my turn. Yeah. Um, hi. Okay. I am Jenny Proctor and it's actually weird for me to hear myself talk because I am currently holed up in a hotel room for a writing deadline and I've just been totally alone for 48 hours and it's like, oh, I'm speaking in this very quiet room. Um, I write romantic comedy. I have, I write as Jenny Proctor. So all my books are just, they have my name on them. I have 20 books out, I think 20. And then the couple of novellas, um, 21 is almost ready, depending on how the next 14 hours in my hotel room go before I have to go back home. Um, I live just outside of Charleston, South Carolina, um, in a town called Somerville. Um, it is the birthplace of sweet tea. If you go to downtown Somerville, there is a giant mug of sweet tea that is like as tall as a building. I don't know, but it's there and it's cool to see. Um, what do I like to do when I'm not writing? Um, I love to hike, which has been a little bit of a struggle. We've been in the low country of South Carolina for almost seven years. And, you know, I live at like 11 feet above sea level. So you can walk in the low country. You really can't hike. There's nothing to climb because there are no hills anywhere. Um, I'm originally from the mountains of North Carolina. And so it's only about four hours up the highway. So my favorite thing to do is to throw the kids in the car and drive up the mountain and do some hiking. That is my happy, happy place is when I can be outside um, with the trees and the views. And um, yeah, so big into hiking. I love to spend time with my, I'm halfway through. Um, getting my kids out of the house. I have six kids, three are out of the house. One's married, three, the oldest three are in college. So I've just got three left that are in middle and high school. So we're very, um, it feels like we're inching up on those last few years with kids in the house, which is totally weird. Um, but yeah, and I also have a golden doodle who's my like favorite thing on the whole planet. He's, his name is Toby. He's in one of my books. Like I had him illustrated and put him on a cover this is the relationship that I have with my dog. So, um, yeah. So that's me. Thank you. All right, Laura. Hey. Um, hi, I'm Laura Ann. Well, that's my pen name is Laura Ann. I, um, I actually have, I've had four pen names over the years, but I'm down to just two of them. Um, and I write under Laura Ann, I write sweet, small town, beach, 
type stuff. Mine are set on the Oregon coast, so it's not a warm beach, but I'm in the Pacific Northwest, so we don't know what a warm beach looks like over here. Um, but the beach is my love language and Florida would be my soul state. Texas is very nice, but Florida is my soul state and I would like to live there someday. So someday I will get away from the misty, rainy, cold mountains, <laughs> come down there and live. Um, I have five kids. I homeschool them. Um, my oldest, uh, graduated last summer and he's, um, doing a little bit of online college while also working to save some money. And we're figuring this fall will probably be about the time that he finally leaps out of the nest here. Um, and my second youngest, uh, oh yes, not a warm beach. And sorry, we had someone else saying they were in Oregon and they, it's, it's not warm at all, rocky and cold, <laughs> but it's still beautiful. Um, so my second youngest is graduating a year early and she plans to go to culinary school. So we'll actually have two of them out of the house. Um, and then I've got twins and then a younger one who's still got a few more years to go, uh, a boy at the end there. So uh, I write and love what I do. My, my second pen name is uh, Abigail Lynn Thornton and I write paranormal cozy mysteries, which allows me to let my brain go anywhere it wants because it's all magic and I can make it whatever I want to have happen. And then I come back down to earth for my romances. Well, come back down to earth for my romances and write things that are a little more realistic because people falling in love in two weeks is super realistic, you know? And um, in my off time, let's see, I am a runner. I really love to run. I mostly do half marathons, um, but I've done a marathon and then walked around like I was 80 for about three days afterwards. <laughs> I would That's love to do my husband that. Just did. My husband just did his fifth and he was, I was like, are you okay, honey? The next day he's like, listen, I only got 60% of my preparation done and I'm just happy I'm still walking. I'm like, oh, well, okay. I'm sorry I asked. You look great. <laughs> Seriously, I did not know a body could hurt that bad. So I ended up doing mine on the treadmill, which I do not recommend to anyone, but on, it was a virtual one. I did a Disney virtual one and it landed in January because Disney is all in lovely warm States and I'm not. And the day of the marathon where I was supposed to run it here at home, it was below freezing and it had what we call a freezing fog outside. And so imagine frog, but below freezing. So it's like ice, you're running through ice. And I was like, I can't run 26 miles in that weather. Like, I just can't, it's, it's not going to work. So I did it on the trip <laughs> and it was horrific, I <laughs> but I got done and I sat down and my husband was in there all cheering with the kids. Cause they could see me at the end and stuff. And I was like, don't make me move. Like, don't make me move. <laughs> don't make me move. Have and you they ever seen, me how, I me the have you seen how I Met Your Mother? What have you seen? How I Met Your Mother, where the character randomly goes and runs a marathon when he's not ready, and then he sits down on the subway because it's free to anyone who ran the marathon, and he can't get back up. He's like stuck on the subway to the end of the line. Sorry, that made me think of that. <laughs> no, that's about right. That's about right. So I got in the shower afterwards, and I was like, the water hurts my skin. Like every nerve ending is on fire. And then this year, I was like, I think I'd like to do another one. So. Oh, Something man. shorts out in our brains. Runners' brains are a little different, I think. <laughs> but yep. anyways, so eventually I will do another one, but not quite yet. So that's, but that's what I do. I love to crochet. Kay, you knit. I have a daughter who knits. Um, she took that up when I took back up crocheting. My grandmother taught me how to crochet. So that's what I do. And, um, and I just sit in the evenings while my kids watch TV and I crochet because I don't have to think about it after I've been using my brain all day writing stories. Um, I'm a big reader, which I'm sure most of you are. And I will read if it has romance in it. I will read it. I, I do not follow stories very well unless there's a good romance in it. That that's kind of my, my thing. So anyways, that's me. Perfect. I think we're to you, Carrie. Y'all have to unmute us. Um, I think I'm unmuted now. Um, I'm Carrie Trumbo. Um, I have, uh, 89 titles between this name and I also write under the name Terry Blake. That's my women's fiction um, pen name. And uh, the first book that I wrote um, as Terry Blake, it features my rabbit. I have a little rabbit. He's a miniature. Um, he's he's a calico Rex. I mean, just super duper cute. Um, I have four cats, but no dogs yet. I say yet because I'm trying to convince my husband. <laughs> um, let's see. I knit. Um, I go for walks. I love the beach, but I love the mountains more. 
Um, and I write mostly cowboys, um, historical and contemporary romance and uh, contemporary romantic suspense. Um, I also am a hybrid. I write both indie and I'm um, traditionally published. Awesome. And where do you live? Don't you live? Uh, is it I'm in central Minnesota. Minnesota. Okay. <laughs> is it pretty cold there right now? I didn't think to ask everyone else, but I think a lot of people have mentioned where they are. No, we had a super mild winter. It was about 62 today. Oh, that's nice. All right. All right. Well, Naomi, we'll go to you next and then have Tammy go after that. And then I'll go last um, because I've been talking most anyway. Okay. So my name is Naomi Rawlings. I write historical Christian romance. And um, I guess I describe my books by saying they take you back to a time when neighbors knew each other's names. Um, I say that my books have like three B's, a three B rule. There's no bedroom scenes, no bad language and no boring books. So um, I enjoy writing like small towns, but they're historical. So I really like playing around with like these isolated locations and small towns where like the whole town is kind of stuck together, like for better or for worse. There's no like, I'm just going to get in a car and drive somewhere and go visit my mom or get away from the noisy na nosy neighbor who's driving me crazy or any of those kinds of things. They're just stuck together. Um, in fact, my first series is set up here where I live, which is by Lake Superior um, in northern Michigan by Lake Superior. And the town was only accessible like six months out of the year and only really accessible by boat. Um, th there were some roads, you know, you could take a road up here, but most people didn't. Um, we get a lot of snow as well. We get like 200 inches of snow on a normal year, which translates into about 20 feet. So in the winter, you're really not taking roads out of Eagle Harbor. So that was the first series that I wrote and it was a lot of fun. And then, um, then I moved down to Texas on the opposite side of the border, which was also a really isolated part of the desert. So I like those kinds of feelings. There's just a lot that I can do with my characters in my towns and kind of make the whole town become like its whole, like the whole center of the universe. And then um, I have a lot of interconnected, like multiple points of view where you'll see characters from previous books. And it just kind of feels like a sticky little uh, small town situation. I, I enjoy it. It's a lot of fun. Um, as for what I do in my free time, well, in the winter, we are a very snow friendly society. Um, so there's, I am learning, I'm getting better at downhill skiing. Um, my son, my middle son is phenomenal at downhill skiing. He's like, mom, take me out west and let me go straight down a cliff. I can do it. Um, it kind of terrifies me. Um, but my, my husband and daughter, they like to ski as well. Um, and then there's snowshoeing, there's snowmobiles, which we don't, we don't really have snow machines, but I like a good snowshoe in the woods after a good snow. So when like the snow is all sticky on all the pine needles and the wood, like all the branches and everything are just covered in snow. I think that's just beautiful. So, um, yeah, we're pretty, we're pretty snow friendly. And then in the summer, um, most people up in the, UP, we're, um, we're outside a lot because our winters are so cold and snowy. And so um, lots of people have gardens and uh, what is just UP? outdoors. What does UP thing. stand for? Oh, UP, um, Upper Peninsula. So it's Michigan's okay. Upper Peninsula. So if you're from the Midwest, you probably know what that means. And if you're not from the Midwest, you're probably clueless. So, so yeah. I was we like, say, I don't know what that one is. <laughs> and we say the UP, meaning Upper Peninsula for Northern okay. Michigan. So. Cool. All right. Well, we may be up to you, Tammy. Are you ready? <laughs> She's got to unmute yeah. us. Yeah. So I know where the UP is because my husband is from Michigan. There and my sister-in-law is a game warden up there in Michigan. Yeah. So, yeah. and he also moved from Michigan down to Texas, which is how we met. Um, I'm, uh, Tam I'm Tammy Deeran. That is actually my maiden name and it's the only pen name I have. And I write I've, um, mostly mostly uh, romance, sweet romance. Uh, I do have a Christian romance series 
and I have uh, also even a young adult fantasy series. And um, my sweet romance, um, I do have a, a regular romantic comedy series. Um, and but all of my books, even the ones that are a little more serious, have have comedy sprinkled into it. And um, we, my husband and I, have been married for forty two years, <laughs> and he's uh, an attorney. And I always say, but he's he's an, a nice attorney, an honest attorney. <laughs> and um, I'm a dentist, but I say that I'm I'm a nice dentist, like I don't hurt people. <laughs> so most people don't want, they're like, oh no, the dentist. And you were telling that story, Mandy, about your daughter and the dentist. I was like, oh my gosh. Um, but dentistry has been good for me because um, there's a lot of artistry involved and I like pretty much anything that's artistic. So I do dabble a little bit of painting. Um, music is my big thing. I do, um, I play multiple instruments like piano, organ, flute, guitar, harmonica, <laughs> and, and I write music and sing and compose uh, songs. Um, and um, I like to do sports like um, downhill skiing, which there isn't a lot of in Texas, which is the only place I've ever lived. Um, but we do, <laughs> we do travel a lot. Um, so I my husband grew up skiing and he's really good. And, you know, it's just we're we're extremely competitive with each other, which I think Bridget and her husband are kind of the same way. <laughs> we're so competitive. And so I had to work really, really hard to learn how to ski so that I could keep up with him. Um, because I couldn't stand the fact that he could ski better than me. He's still better than me, but I, you know. Okay. I, I just have to say that. though, Tammy and her husband are a hoot. We had a double date not that long ago. And what's funny is he's one of these guys who likes to kind of embellish on stories a little bit. And Tammy the whole time is like, no, no, that's not how it happened. You weren't actually there. Don't tell it that way. I mean, listening to the two of them is just hilarious i i don't think we've had a more fun double date like we had a great time the two of them are great they're crack ups he makes me crazy he told a story one time about one of our friends and and it was a, about the, the story she had told us about when she gave birth and by the time he was through with that story he was in the delivery room so i mean he does go too far <laughs> and she's right there to be like, that is not how it happened. You are making this story too big. You were not there. It was cracking. My husband and I had a great time on that double date. It was pretty funny. One of these days, her lawyer husband's going to have to write a book too, but she'll be right yeah. there fact checking him. <laughs> That's right. Uh, we'll see. We have, we have two uh, girls who are grown and married and we've got uh, six grandkids and um, my, uh, my, oldest daughter adopted her first two. And so um, that let us get kind of a jump start on the age. And so I actually have my oldest grandson is uh, 21 now, which is crazy to me. Um, but he's um, in at, at UT and is studying computer science. He's getting a triple major in computer science and math and Russian um, because he was originally from Ukraine. And uh, he is also, uh, I'll talk a little bit about him later, because he is uh, blind and he was the uh, part of the inspiration for the book, um, The Billionaire's Secret Marriage, which is about a guy who is blind. Tammy, you have a question on there too about whether your daughters inspired your Best Girls series. Yeah. Oh, yeah, <laughs> totally. I know you're like... Not supposed to say, you know, you're supposed to have this disclosure thing about like, uh, you know, the people in here are not real people or whatever, but that was totally untrue. They were, uh, all the personalities were, both of those girls were my daughter's personalities and um, they recognized themselves. Um, and my husband, I told, he he was, uh, I always say that he was the inspiration for Stephen Gearing, who was the, the hot billionaire in my first book. But um, he says that I killed him off 15 years before the book because that girl was a widow, the one, the, a widower, the one who uh, 
who who was Ann Best in that book. So anyway, uh, but yes, my def my family was definitely the inspiration for that series. That's so fun. All right, well, we're down to just me. So this is where you set the timer, Elena, to make sure I don't talk too long, the extroverted <laughs> author on here. Um, so I have um, basically like a menagerie at my house. Um, I have seven horses, um, three dogs. Sometimes I also have lots of puppies because we breed one of my Pomeranians. Um, one of the ones that we have is actually the mother's child. So we have a mom and a daughter. Um, and then we have a border collie and she's completely insane. Uh, we have three cats. One of actually, they're all rescues. Um, they're barn cats, but they have a tack room, an air conditioned and heated tack room that they duke it out to decide who's going to be in um, at any given point. And then we have um, 31 chickens. Someone was saying on here they had a whole bunch of chooks, which is what they call the chickens um, in the UK, I think. But man, chicken math is real. If you think you're just going to get a couple, just prepare yourself. You're going to have 20 or 30 before you know it because they are a real hoot. Um, and then we also have. Um, and then I have five kids, which I also feel like should be probably classified as animals. But um, I do homeschool the younger two because our kids' school is like hopelessly overcrowded and I just don't, don't want to shove them into that. Um, so my older three go to school. My oldest is 16. My youngest is seven. Um, and we do a whole lot of horseback riding. And I also love to crochet. I can't knit. I tried knitting a couple of times and it is beyond me. I'm like, I can't get all this stuff on. And then once I got it on, it all came off. And I was like, I hate this thing. And I threw the needles against the wall and just went back to crocheting. But I can pretty much crochet almost anything, but I can't knit at all. My grandma could not figure out how to teach me to knit. So I just gave up. Um, but uh, in terms of hobbies, I like to kickbox. I love to bake. Um, oh, and I was supposed to get, we, I live in Texas, um, Houston, Texas. So we've driven up to Fort Worth for this horse show. That's where we are now. Three, all three of my girls ride competitively. Um, right now they're, they jump, um, their horses. So they each have a horse that jumps. Um, and then we had a horse show over the weekend and then we have one now, but then we don't have any till August. So we have like a really long break, which will be really good for me. Um, and then I also write under two names. So I write, um, romance, clean romance and women's fiction. So you'll find that my clean romance is very women's fiction-y. It has a lot of stuff going on in it, um, side plots and subplots and whatnot. And then my women's fiction, which is what I gave out here, actually, the Birch Creek Ranch series starts with a bequest, and it is women's fiction for sure. But it definitely still has a strong romantic subplot. Um, so each of the women that are point of view characters will end up having some kind of romance um, during the course of the series. But if you've already read the bequest, you might have noticed that there's not even a kiss in that first one. So it's definitely women's fiction, but they all have strong romantic subplots. And I write all of that under B.E. Baker. And then I write anything that you pick up under Bridget E. Baker is going to be weird. Um, I, I like to say it's romanticy, but don't but it say isn't that. Weird. I'm always telling Bridget, don't say your books are weird. Just be like, they are kind of weird book, though, you're because be blown away with this. They're awesome. really good. They're amazing. <laughs> they're just strange. So if you're thinking, oh, she writes romanticy, I'll pick up your normal like wolf shifter or vampire books. That's I have a horse shifter romance series, and I have um like Evian, an Evian series, which is basically like genetic superhumans, descended liter literal descendants from Adam and Eve who are superhuman and have powers. It's kind of like X-Men meets Wonder Woman, Wonder Woman. And then I have like, um, I have a dragon shifter series, but it's like dragons that used to live here on earth reinvade the earth because they're looking for something. And there's this MMA fighter who has to fight them off. They're just weird. All of them are weird. I have a, um, I tried to do one that was normal and it was like, paranormal creatures like vampires witches werewolves meets friends so it's like light-hearted comedy set in new york city but with paranormal creatures as the characters anyway all of my books under bridget e baker are strange but i will say most romanticy is not clean all of my books whether you're looking under bridget e baker or be baker they are all clean of any bad language or any adult content so all of mine under any name are clean. And I just put out my 44th book last week. So under both names, I think I have like 19 or so under B.E. Baker and the other 20 something are under Bridget E. Baker. So now we're going to roll back around. On, before we move on, I have to put this comment up because it's really funny. <laughs> That's true though. If you know anything about chickens, this is the chicken thing. They'll be like, well, 
I only wanted five chickens and my husband said 10, but God wanted 20. So 40 it is like, that's a very, that is chicken math right there. People, as soon as you start getting them, but they're so cute and they're small and they give me eggs and I want the blue egg and I need a teal egg and they have an olive egg. And then you have 40. So. Yeah. I thought that was really funny. And so I just wanted to put that up because I, we're looking at your comments. We can see them for yeah. sure. So yeah, they're really funny. Anyway, um, all right. So now we're going to go back to Elena. And uh, Elena, why don't you tell us about the relationship? And we only have like 20 minutes left, so we actually have to stick to it. Um, tell us about the book. Yes, and you're even holding it up. Beautiful. Good job. I, I brought one. So I'll go really fast. So my book is The Relationship. It's a standalone. It's not in a series. You can read it one and done. You don't have to get invested in all the side characters and keep track of the 25 grand cook. Because if you read my Liz books, you really kind of need a family tree to fill out as you go. This one, you don't. You just read it. It's a friends to lovers. I call it a travel romance. They travel to Belize for a midwinter trip. Um, they've been doing it for five years and this year they have caught feelings for each other. He's actually had a crush on her for a couple of years and they have to share one bed when they get to the resort. Things go haywire from there. It's love on the beach. It's called the relation trip and you can get it on all retailers if you missed it in the free sale. And I loved writing it. I wrote it in eight days on the beaches of Grand Cayman last January it was amazing to float out in the fabulous sandy beach vibe that I like. That's my book. Do you see how fast I was? You were that really so fast. fast. Show, your, show your cover one more time because it's so pretty. Oh, I do love my cover. It's called The Relationship. You can see the little flamingo over here. He's very subtle. But there he is. <laughs> All right, Kay. We're up to you and we get to hear about memories of the beach. All right. Um... That is book one in my last series that is now complete. There's eight books in it. And I started it out with just this concept of this older lady that was going to have some kind of secret. And my youngest son helps me brainstorm a lot. And um, so we came up with a whole idea for her. But then in the first book, I sat down and I'm like, I have no clue what this book is about and started writing. And then I was like, huh, really? This is what the book's about? And it came up that this like girl had an imaginary friend as a child. And then she finds out the friend wasn't really imaginary. And her mom had kept this terrible secret from her. And I was like, huh, how did this come out like this? So it was a whole lot of fun to write. I just love it when stuff like that just comes out and I don't even, I'm like, how'd my brain even think of it? But um, so the girl in the first book, her story weaves all the way through the um, series along with this older character that I introduce. And that's usually what my readers like about my books is I have characters that I weave in and out of all the series. And sometimes I'll drag one from an old series and bring them for a walk on character in a newer series. So anyway, that is what my book was about. And here I am holding up the cover. That's okay. It's I don't so mind funny. either. Hey, um, I did want to mention, I did see someone asking if we had audiobooks on all of these. And so if you want to mention when you, I know Elena, you have an audio book on the relation. Oh, you don't. Okay. You do on <laughs> most of your shows. Most of yours are in audio. Um, okay. So maybe starting with you and then going around, mention whether it's in audio or not. I do not have it in audio. Not yet. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm Mindy. My book is A Thousand Words. This is it. And it's so only a this, thousand words long? <laughs> I said magically. You said we didn't have it. And then magically, here it is. Oh, magically, yeah. I do. <laughs> um, that was the magician. So, Right this there. is the prequel to my first series. It's a small town series set in Georgia, which is close to home for me. Love it. Um, so kind of Southern based here. Um, it is opposites attract. She is very fun, lively and outgoing. He is a doctor with terrible bedside manner. And so his boss kind of pushes him on this blind date with someone she knows. 
and it ends up being someone he knows. So it's his, it's his best friend's little sister. And so it was kind of a, no, this is not going to work, but they end up staying on the date. Well, she kind of pushes him to stay on the date and things go from there. But um, I started the series with book one. And when I wrote book one, this couple was already married. So I always knew I wanted to go back and write their story, but I really wanted to wait until I could do it justice because she is a very funny and lively outspoken character and i am not any of those things in my real life so i had to really that's make not true I'm i don't know about outspoken but you are funny and lively having spent well, time around you you are both thanks <laughs> i try um but yeah she's just um go with the flow spontaneous and he is not so that provides a lot of comedy as well but banter because she's not afraid to butt up against him and things like that um, so I love the small town setting. I love that they're trying, they're trying something new, kind of don't want to get it out in public yet until they figure out what's going on. Um, the whole concept of a thousand words is that he doesn't always know what to say. And so she tells him, we'll just start with one word, break it down to one word, give me your one word. And he can do that. And then they can go from there. Um, most of my books, I would say probably, I think maybe all of my books have no third act breakup. I prefer an external conflict. So it's something that these characters are going to have to battle together and figure out if they're, you know, going to stick to it through that. Um, in this one, it does deal with um, her brother is an alcoholic. And so they are trying to both help him in different ways and get through that. So my books are all Christian. They are all clean. There's nothing, nothing, you know, crazy in them like that. But, you know, they are going to deal with things like alcoholism. So be prepared for that. Um, this book is also available in audiobook. It is narrated by Lorena Hoops and um, Jay Dice. So it's one of my favorites. They did a great job. Love it so much. But also this is kind of one of my favorite books that I have written because I try really hard to put so much into these characters. I loved them already by the time I got to their books. So it's special to me. So that's all I'm that going to show you again. That sounds awesome. Yes. Bring it, bring it up close so we can really see it. There you go. Very pretty. All right, Jenny, you're up. Okay. Um, I don't have a, a copy of my book on me, but the book that was in the bundle for me is called love in bloom. So Love and Bloom is actually a book four in a series, but they are all completely standalone, four completely different couples. You can read them in any order. The couples from the previous books do show up, but the only spoiler is that they're together. So, I mean, it's romance. So if that's a spoiler, you're in, you're in the wrong genre because um, they, they always get together at the end of the book, right? Um, so Love and Bloom is kind of my love letter to Charleston. Um, I moved to Charleston, well, you know, right outside of Charleston seven years ago. And so... It's a destination city. Um, if you've never been there, um, it's one of the oldest cities in the United States. Um, it's it's a walled city. So there are two rivers that come down in South Carolina and they meet in the Charleston Harbor and then go out to ocean, the ocean. And so Charleston has this giant, like they built a big wall. Um, and then so to, like even to get to the beach in Charleston, you have to go across a big bridge to the islands because the city itself is completely, um, like they built up this big battery. and. There are all of these beautiful houses and cobblestone streets and flowers everywhere and huge live oak trees that are green all year round and just have these sprawling branches. Um, the city has so much character. And so when people come to visit, I would always take everybody downtown and we would do a walking tour of Charleston. And so I got to know sort of the culture of these walking tour guides who make a living out of taking, you know, groups of seven, 10 people and walking them three miles around downtown Charleston and telling them about the history of the city. And so after doing several different walking tours with several different tour guides, you start to notice that there are patterns. They always walk the same routes and sometimes they'll cross other tour guides. And it's like they have this whole system of how they don't get in each other's way. And I thought, wouldn't it be interesting if there were two tour guides that were sort of really competitive with each other and they kind of liked to, um, you know, sneak around and get the best route and maybe cut off the other. And so I just sort of 
this idea just formed of these dueling tour guides. Um, and so it was so fun because I got to fully immerse myself in the history of the city. I went and talked to so many different people. I There's one scene where like there's this old dungeon that used to be like a prison during the Revolutionary War. And so I went and I did a tour of the dungeon and I was asking questions like, so what scenario would have to happen for two people to get trapped in here like overnight? So the tour, like the docents were like, I don't know if, what are you asking about? And I was like, I swear it's just for a book. I'm not gonna lock anybody in the dungeon for real. Um, but I just really loved being able to include real historical facts about a city that I really love and just sort of weave it into the lives of these fictional characters. And so um, the, the flower boxes in Charleston is what gave the, the book its name because this tour guide, she really wants to design flower boxes, which are works of art in Charleston because they bloom all year long. Um, and so even just when you're walking around, like if you Google Charleston flower boxes, you will see incredible pictures. So do that. It's really fun. Um, so yeah, it's just about a city that I love with characters that I had a lot of fun writing and lots of en enemies to lovers banter. And um, so even though I'm not native to Charleston, it was really fun to sort of immerse myself into the city and, and find a way to tell a story that sort of hopefully does the city justice. So that's so, it. All right, Laura, you're up. All right. I, I want to come to Charleston now, Jenny. <laughs> I will <laughs> let you take me on a walking tour. I'll do it. Come on down. So one of my sweet little twins brought me a book. <laughs> I sat over here and was like texting him like, ah, somebody bring me my book. So, okay. My book is Her Unexpected Roommate. And I, I love this book for multiple reasons. I, I made a jump when I started writing this. When I very first started writing, I kind of jumped around in, in different. I also, I mean, we're all clean writers here, clean and wholesome. Um, and I um, had kind of, when I started, that's all I knew that I wanted to do. I wanted to do romance. And I, so I have like a billionaire series and I have a bodyguard series, which I loved actually i would have loved to have made just bodyguards but i kept moving and um i wrote a a trilogy a christmas trilogy that was small town just kind of on a whim and it kind of exploded my career that christmas trilogy small town and i it was about a, a place called the gingerbread inn that i made up on the oregon coast um but after that i was like okay small town's going to be my thing and i'm, I'm raised in a, in a fairly smaller town it's not the tiny like 3000 person town, but we're not very big either. Um, there was one high school, you know, growing up and that kind of thing. So um, anyways, this was my first foray into a full length because that trilogy, they were all small, like 35,000 word books. And this is 75,000 words. So this was me jumping into that. And it's been my bestseller ever since. Um, and I do not really remember where I got the idea from, but Enemies to Lovers is one of my favorite things ever. And I also kind of have a thing about, I really like like reformed bad boys. <laughs> so I kind of put those in here. And I have a girl who, um, I like to have a real big character arc, growth arc in my books. Um, so I, I dabble in women's fiction, but it's secondary. The romance is definitely very first in my books. And so they're the growth arc that you usually find in women's fiction is secondary. But um, they, it's a girl who grew up with her grandmother, who was not very, not very warm. And she grew up in the seaside mansion. And her grandmother always said, this house will be yours when I die. Well, when she died, she found out that wasn't true, that she actually only owns half of it. Um, because to pay taxes, um, years ago, her grandmother had sold half of the mortgage to a family friend. Well, the lawyer says the family friend is old. He lives clear across the country. It probably won't be that hard for you to buy him out of what he owns in this house. Well, before she can find out, you know, get a hold of this guy, um, a guy on a motorcycle with long hair shows up on her doorstep and says, hey, this is my house and I'm moving in. <laughs> so she has to deal with the fact that the other owner actually had died and passed down the deed, the half of deed to his grandson. And it's not one bed, <laughs> they're in the, but they're in the same house. There are painting wars that occur, um, which I have to admit was a little bit inspired by Sleeping Beauty because it goes pink and blue and pink and blue and pink and blue <laughs> back and forth like her dress does because um, she wants to paint it mauve. 
And he says, that's not a color. And he doesn't want to let her do that. So he paints it back and then she paints it and he paints it back. So it's a lot of fun as they kind of fight over this house and then eventually fall in love and have to work together to fight an external um, situation as well. But it's, it's just been such a love for me to be able to, to write these stories that my head just comes up with and, um, and put my favorite things in a book and then to see other people enjoy it. So this one will always have a special place because it's what really started my small town um, career, if you will. And it's the first of 10. The book, the series has 10 in it. Um, and they're all what I would call interconnected standalones. So you meet the whole friend group in the beginning and then each of them gets their own story throughout. So you can read them separate because they're all whole romances. But if you start with book one, you'll see Easter eggs of everybody else's romance and how things are going to develop. Um, and I usually have at least one romance that you will get the story of towards the end that you'll see pieces of happening all the way along. And in this one, it's it's book eight in this series called Her Unexpected Protector. And their, their romance is kind of a tug at the heart situation. And you'll see pieces of it in all the romances leading up to book eight. So you can read it by standalone, but reading them in order just gives you more depth to what's going on. But anyways, that's mine. Great. All right, Carrie, you're up. All right. I don't know if you can see it, but there, that's my cover. <laughs> it is Rodeo Sabotage. Um, it is cowboy adjacent um, because He's a bull rider um, for the rodeo. Um, he does own a ranch, but none of the story takes place on the ranch. It all takes place in Las Vegas, Nevada for the uh, rodeo championships. Um, but if you love small town, don't worry, because it is also uh, very much forced proximity. They have to hide the whole time. So you're not going to get the big city feel of Las Vegas in this book. Um, let's see. It's got a STEM heroine. She is a, she is a um, EMT. Um, so that was kind of fun. Big city girl, cowboy, um, you know, the, the, in, the exchange between those two was really great. And I think I had the only suspense in the group. So it is romantic suspense. You get just as much suspense as you get romance. Cause I love both. So I tried to be quick. Awesome. <laughs> no, you were quick. I was like, Oh, she's done. Okay. All right. Naomi, you're up after I give Carrie her speed award. Now you're up. <laughs> Um, so my book is Tomorrow's First Light. It's got the uh, cowboy and the redhead on the cover, and it is historical. And um, so remember, I was telling you about how we all live up in, you know, near Lake Superior, and we get 200 inches of snow, 20 feet of snow a year. And so uh, this this character right here, Ellie, she's living up in, uh, in Eagle Harbor. And things are not working out for her romantically in Eagle Harbor. So she decides that she's going to become a mail order bride. And she's going to go all the way down to the opposite end of the country, to the border of Mexico and the U.S. in just like barren, yellow, rocky desert. And she's going to marry a rancher. And uh, her, her mom dies unexpectedly about a month before she's supposed to go. And Ellie has eight younger brothers and sisters. And so um, Ellie writes Sam and she's like, hey, you know, can I bring my sibling or I'm going to bring three of my siblings, the baby and the two older boys to help on the ranch. Right. And um, Sam's like, OK, yeah, sure. That's fine. Uh, Sam grew up an orphan as an orphan. And he got gets given like this tract of land, like a small ranch on the border and he just wants to have a family like a home and a family that's like his dream so he's like sure I, i've got a wife now i'm gonna you know have a couple of kids to help on the ranch this is gonna be great well then something happens and ellie's aunt can't take the other five siblings so you know ellie writes sam and says can i bring everyone i'm so sorry and sam does not get that letter because you know this is the way things go and novels you know you have to have a lost letter right so when ellie arrives in texas she arrives with all eight of her siblings stepping out of the stagecoach and sam has a group of friends um we call this like a found family kind of series sam has a group of 
this group of five childhood friends, and they're already giving him like so much grief for get, having a mail order bride come. And he's like, oh, it's just going to be help on the ranch. It'll be fine. And then there's like all eight kids tumble out of the carriage. And uh, yeah, it, it's a lot of fun. It's it's what my reader's favorite book, actually. Anytime I ask my readers, I'm like, which of my books is your favorite? This one always wins. I think it's got a really nice blend of like, the value of families, family values, and a lot of funny, quirky things. They're just so much fun. You can have with eight kids that are all trying to do their own things. And then, um, but then also a bit of seriousness as Sam and Ellie really need to work through like the sacrifices they need to make or the steps they need to take to like develop a relationship with each other. Um, I will also say, um, that the the as far as Sam's concerned, like his group of friends is his family. And I start actually start the series with a prologue that takes place. Oh, I don't know, maybe like 13 or 15 years before the series happens. And it's all these friends. Um, they catch their teacher kissing uh, someone, kissing the preacher, the teacher and the preacher are kissing and they, they it gets them into an argument over whether or not they're going to get married one day and whether they're better off being married or not being married one day and so three of the friends decide like yes I'm going to get married I want a house I want a home you know Sam especially because he's an orphan and then two of the other friends who didn't have the best like home life they're like no all women do is ruin things they mess things up so they make this you know like like blood oath with their hands and everything and um whoever doesn't keep the pact is going to uh, get their head shaved uh, when they get older. So all five of the men are approaching 30 and three of them swore they'd get married by the time they're 30. Two of them swore there's no way they're ever gonna get married, but especially not before they're 30. And so that's a real kind of fun thing that runs throughout the whole series. And I won't give it away, but my readers really loved how it ended up turning out in the end. So I will say that as well. That sounds fun. All right, Tammy, you're up. Are you ready? You're muted. All right, I'll try to go fast since uh, we're almost out of time. So here's uh, my book. This is, I actually have a couple of different covers, but this is the one I currently have up, this floral cover uh, for The Billionaire's Secret Marriage. And this uh, is part of my Limitless series. And the Limitless series is based on some guys who were, um, they met at a computer camp when they were teenagers, but it was a computer camp for kids with disabilities. So all the guys in the series have disabilities, different disabilities that are challenges um, that, that they face. And, and the books are not really centered around the disabilities. They just happens to be one of the things like, you know, your hair is brown. Oh, and you also happen to be blind. Um, and so in this case, uh, the first book, uh, The Billionaire Secret Marriage, the the hero is blind and he uh they they later get together and form uh, a corporation and it becomes a multi-billion dollar corporation and then they have a charity arm uh called limitless that benefits um kids with disabilities and so in this one um it's a she, uh, he has a secretary who's been in love with him secretly for a long time um but she uh can tell he doesn't have any feelings for her and he gets engaged to just an awful woman because um, he's just making a business deal and he doesn't think any woman could love him because his father has made him feel horrible about the fact that he's blind and doesn't have real eyes. Uh, and so uh, they, um, they accidentally uh, get married uh, in Las Vegas uh, through a series of crazy events like can only happen in books, but um, they accidentally get married by Elvis at an Elvis chapel. And, um, and then they have to keep it a secret until they can get it um, ended. So uh, and then part of the book is with them married and um, trying to keep it a secret while both of them really are in love with each other, of course, and uh, can't admit it. So, uh, and I will go on over to Bridget. So you've got a few seconds to tell about yours. Okay. Well, Tammy, I wanted um, to tell you that I, I got married in Vegas and it was fun. 
Was <laughs> were you married by Elvis? No, but I wish oh, I had a dime so for close. every time I wanted to ask. <laughs> um, I actually did choose a an Elvis song as one of my wedding songs. So you see, that's that's Elvis and Jason. It, it was, was an there. Elvis song for a wedding song. That's good. The spirit, the spirit of a Vegas wedding. <laughs> Um, so my book is called The Bequest, and it actually came, I, I pull a lot of things from my life, like I have a horse shifter romance series, and, and I have seven horses, so obviously I get a lot of ideas from my life, but I am a lawyer as well, I didn't say anything about that, and um, I have a client who has had me do a bunch of work for them, they own a ranch, um, and it's literally their ranch, I was talking to him about their ranch, and I said, maybe I'll use it for a book, and he's like, you should, uh, which was really helpful, because I ended up talking to the guy who's working the ranch, the brother of my client, um, who's one of the owners of this ranch. I talked to him for like 50 hours on the phone about ranching. I know a lot about horses and nothing about cows, um, or at least at the time I knew nothing about it. But another friend of mine I was helping, her husband had passed away. And she was telling me, so I was helping her with stuff with his estate, and it was very unexpected. And she was telling me that her husband's brother had passed away a year before. And she and her sister-in-law had not gotten along at all, really. And then after they both lost their husbands, who were brothers, um, within a year of each other, they got to be really good friends, even though they didn't have much in common. So I had this idea. And then I had this client who I was helping with their ranch um, that they'd owned since the land grant. And I got this idea to have. And like Naomi was talking about how there are all these kids in her story and how much how much breadth that gives you for a story. And, um, and I have five kids and I come from a big family myself. And I thought, why in all these stories that I'm reading, is there like one kid or two? Like, why aren't there big families? I learned, as I'm sure Naomi learned, it's very difficult. It's kind of like trying to do a, a inverted French braid or something with your eyes closed. You're like, wait, there's another, wasn't there another person here? What would, where did they go? You know, there's a lot of characters uh, to manage. So I had two widows, both one coming, one coming from New York City. She was an influencer. And then another widow who I made uh, because I needed an easy one. I made her a lawyer from Houston. I'm a lawyer in Houston. And I gave her four kids and I have five. So I just made those four kids the same personalities as my four kids. And then um, and then I gave my fifth kid the personality of one of the influencers kids. And then my I took a, a niece for the other one. So all six of the kids, it's really easy to keep them straight because it's my five kids and a niece. But anyway, um, so there's a bunch of kids. It's two city widows. Um, and then all their kiddos, and then there's a ranch that they stand to inherit, but only if they come work it for a year. So I thought it would be interesting to have these two big city widows come to this ranch in the middle of nowhere. And I set all my books for better or for worse. I've never made up a place. Mine are always in real places. They're in Houston. They're in uh, Manila, Utah. They are, which is on the kind of on the border of Wyoming and Utah. It's literally in the middle of nowhere. It's a city of like 300. Um, and I went out there and saw the ranch and met all the horses and have posted in my group all the different um, pictures of the actual Birch Creek Ranch, which I totally stole. And um, I've been and talked to the people in the town and in the True Value Hardware, which is also their grocery store. Um, and they have copies of my book because the people there were so nice. They were really helpful and excited. Um, and so these widows are going through a lot of healing. Um, my brother passed away. And so I talked to my uh, sister-in-law about it a bunch. And she's read the whole series. It's her favorite series of mine. Um, and so it was just a lot of fun to write. There are a lot of little kids with big personalities. There are two widows that are very different, that don't really get along and don't like each other. And it is not one. My Finding Home series, you can just pick up a book anywhere, like a lot of the other people have talked about their complete romances. This is not. You have to read book one. If you try to just start with book two, you'll be really lost um, because there is a lot going on. And I'm writing the last book right now. It's book eight. And they're all interconnected. And you really feel, I feel at least, I don't know, I think my readers would say this, that you really feel like these people are family by the end. But it is like you start with book one and book one could stand alone. I try to wrap things up at the end of each book. Each one has, you know, it's the bequest and the bequest is mostly tied up. And then the next one is the vow and then the ranch and each of those things. I have a plot arc in every book that is wrapped up, but they are all interconnected. And if you read book one, you'll pro probably want to read the rest of the series. So if you just want to stand alone, go read The Relation Trip um, or one of the other ones. If you don't like series, you're going to want to steer clear from the bequest. So that kind of gives you an idea, um, I think, a little bit of what each of these books are. And we were really excited to take the chance to give all of you guys all of our books. One thing we haven't said on here, but I did see questions. 
They were only free for three days. Some people had their books in KU and pulled them out just for this. There were a whole lot of things going on. I don't mind if people come to my Facebook group. I don't mind dropping a link. You can go download my book for free. Um, the bequest in my Facebook group. I don't know if any of the other authors are going to do anything like that. Um, I know that the bequest is free in audio. I do have it in audio. It is free on audio. I think on Chirp and Apple and Google Books right now, or Google Play. I just made it free like two days ago. So you can even grab the audio book of the bequest for free if you like audio. And I think everybody's got theirs in paperback. I, you guys can all nod. Are your books available in paperback? I saw some people saying they only like print and that's fine. We can't make those free. That's too expensive. Um, we would all go broke. Um, but we only had them free for that three-day period for a variety of logistical reasons that would bore you. But they're not all free in a bundle right now. But they're all available. So if you heard about one that you didn't grab for free, most of ours are almost never free. I've only made mine free once for like two days before now, except the audio is currently free as of two days ago. Um, so, but if anyone else has theirs free right now or is going to put it free in their group, if you want to mention it, feel free. Um, if you go to my website, there's on the top of my website, NaomiRawlings.com, you can actually get a free copy of this ebook. I, I do give that one away free um, if you sign up for my newsletter list. So great. So Mine's see, there's free as well. A thousand words oh, okay. is free if you go to my website and sign up for my newsletter. It's free. Yeah. Perfect. It's not free on Amazon or anywhere else. You won't find it free. But if you go to my website, you can get it for free. Great. My book isn't free, but there's a free bonus scene to the book, this particular book, if you come join my newsletter. Great. All right. Well, I think I speak for everybody when I say thank you so much. We got to do a giveaway. We got to do a giveaway. We got to oh. announce our giveaway winners too. So we are really grateful for you guys. We really love our readers. Without you, we could not have this amazing job, but I'm going to pass the torch up to Elena so that she can do our giveaways because I do not have a giveaway hat. So, And I also want to remind you that we're doing scavenger hunts. I don't know if you've heard about that or not. Um, if you got the bundle um, back in February, you should have gotten emails about scavenger hunts. So we're group one. We're, I mean, that doesn't mean we're the best. We just happen to have a one. That's all I'm going to say. And um, if you read our nine books and you find the clue to the scavenger hunt, you can enter to win the scavenger hunt, which is another um, chance for another $20 gift card. So I just posted that. And, and authors, if I can't post in your group, then will you just make sure you go into your group and make sure you post that maybe just on this uh, chat that comes up? You can say, you know, you know, join the scavenger hunt here or whatever. Um, we did see a lot of your comments. Tons and tons and tons of them have come through. So I, I wanted to put them up on the screen, but then it gets a little um, disjointed and we get distracted. And anyway, every single person had comments that were like, I love that book. I love that book. I was riveted to that book. I love that. So just we like Bridget said, we just can't. We can't keep writing unless we have people who read. So we're really, really grateful for everyone who, re who reads. Well, Bridget was talking about her, her two widows and six kiddos. And P.S. I've written Cowboy Family Saga with nine brothers. So there's a reason why you don't have more than one or two kids in your books. Because you don't even <laughs> remember their own name. You, I'm like, what was what? I have no clue what this person's name is. Anyway, I was picking some winners on the back end, and these people need to email me, and I and 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 we'll converse, and I'll make sure you get your gift card. So you're going to email me at books at feelgoodfictionbooks.com. That's books at feelgoodfictionbooks.com. And that person is uh, there's three of them: Susan, Sue Bryant. She just this just happened to be her comment. So yay. Okay, this is the comment that won. So Sue, if you'll email me at books at feelgoodfictionbooks.com, then we can coordinate what kind of gift card you want and I'll get it out to you to the right email address. Um, another winner was Amy Jacobs and she was talking about gardening and love and bloom. So that was exciting when, when her number got pulled. So awesome. Um, and I do feel bad we didn't get to answer questions. We, we, you know, we only want it to be an hour. I mean, I, you know, I think your attention kind of wanes, our attention kind of wanes, but we do see them. Authors, if you see questions in your group, please, you know, go answer them and interact with people so that we, they feel heard. And our last one is Shannon Hansen. I don't, I don't know what book this was, but all of them, all nine <laughs> books tonight. She definitely wants to read it. So, um, Shannon, if you can email me as well at books at feelgoodfictionbooks.com, 
then we can get together for the uh, gift card and make sure that you get that. And that's about it. So scavenger hunt for us. There's a scavenger hunt for all three groups. And there's another group next Wednesday, March 20th, same time, not the same place unless you're on the Feel Good Fiction YouTube channel. It will be on the Feel Good Fiction YouTube channel. I think Bridget and I are going to stream to our uh, sites again, but we're going to have eight new other people. So, because there were 25 books in the Meet Your Clean Romance Crush giveaway, and this is just group one. There's three. So March 20th, which is next Wednesday at 9 p.m. Eastern, and then March 26th, which is another Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern. So mark your calendars. I mean, like I said, we had the number one, but there's a lot more great authors coming up as well and amazing books for you to read with clean content that you're going to love. So do we just want to be like, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everyone, for being here with 